Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am, send me. Don't you love that? <laughs> All right. Laughing on the other end of the phone uh, is James Yeager. Say hello, James. Hello, everyone. Mm. And welcome. Every, every time, every, listen. Every time I hear that, who shall I send? Mm-hmm. Uh, um, I, I think of the little rascals when they were doing Romeo and Juliet, and Buckwheat goes, "Here I is." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he is. Uh, and, and, and any Gen Z person that could would possibly be listening, or even uh, millennial, they're like, I have no idea what this guy's talking about. <laughs> so yeah, my jokes aren't for them. No, they're not. They're absolutely not. And I say, I say, I, they, I don't get that. I say, go read a book, uh, or, or or watch some movies or something. So. You, this weekend, uh, as is my want and desire, uh, I've I've decided to. I, I know that the, the the socialists and the puke bags in in California don't like religion, and they don't like right and wrong, and they certainly don't like proverbs. So I thought, well, mm-hmm. all right, I'm going to go ahead and, and use that uh, to proclaim, and, and I put up the quote from Proverbs six twelve: "A worthless person." A wicked man is one who walks with a false mouth. B I N G O. And uh, you went ahead and you commented and you said, Many, quote, fire insurance Christians scold me because I cuss. I tell them that my mouth only talks truth. Then I change the subject and talk about gluttony and they walk away. <laughs> <laughs> Well, see, I grew up in the South around a lot of Baptists. Now, Baptists are, by and large, the vast majority are great people, but a certain percentage of them are like the Hezbollah of Christianity. Mm-hmm. And uh, they, they they don't actually live by the Bible. They want you to think they live by the Bible. And they're certain, they're certain to point out when they think you're not. Yeah, tell I mean, I think I know what you mean by fire insurance Christians, but I want oh, yeah. you to tell yeah. the audience what you mean by fire insurance Christians. They they attend they attend services just enough to keep from burning in hell. So for them that means we're going to go Easter, we're going to go Christmas. You know, we're we're probably not going to go in the spring when it's really nice out, and we're not going in the summer because we're doing barbecues. And in the fall, the leaves are so nice we have to see those. So they wound up going to, to church, Easter, Christmas, you know, a few things like that. And they only pay their tithes when they go to church. They don't understand they can mail their tithes in. They just pay them the days they go. And they typically write a check. So the, the so the, the, the parish has to see how much money they put in the bucket. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I was talking to Zach earlier today, and... I, I told him we were going to do this, and and I said that puts me in mind of, and we're exactly five by five. I said when I was growing up, I remember my mom and dad talking about Christmas Christians. You know, uh, mm-hmm. they, why why could you never? We, we got to get to. I remember my parents saying this: we got to get to the Christmas Eve service early so we can get a seat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was that's never a problem. Eleven, yeah, any other day. Yeah, eleven months out of the year, that's not an issue. I never heard my mom and dad on a regular, normal, you know, February Sunday morning say, "We need to hurry because if we don't get to church now, we won't get a seat." Uh, <laughs> yeah, and 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 New, and and New Year's Day, you can't get into a gym from all the I call them resolutioners, mm-hmm. but apparently no, apparently nobody's resolution has anything to do with going to church because the churches aren't full the first Sunday after the new year. <laughs> uh, Chris, you know, and 
Christmas Christians and Easter Christians, you know. Uh, we, we, you got the Easter service and you got the Christmas service and, and the rest of the year, you know, it, it, the, and when I was talking to Zach, I, I said, you probably never heard this. I said, that's just enough to, to, to punch my ticket. You know, I did my, I did what I was supposed to do. Now I can feel okay. Yep. And, and I'll be there again eventually. And I'm not, I don't want to use this platform to talk about politics, but that put me seemed to be a perfect uh, connotation for the Republicans or conservatives or whatever who vote once every four years. Right. They, they vote at the presidential election, right? And, you know, whether they win or lose, they're like, okay, I did my part. I'm going to check out. I'm going to stop paying attention, and I'll be back in four years. So, and, yep. then, and then they wonder they're like hey what's this new law thing and what's this and what's this and you're like yeah bro you know where where have you been you know you've and, <laughs> you know you you voted you you voted for trump in 2016 he won you're like okay we're saved i'd be saved and i can stop paying attention <laughs> i don't have to i don't have to be active i don't have to in you know i'm good we're good um <laughs> so that yeah, you're 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 fire insurance Christians, people who basically they just they uh, get just enough, you know. Because Zach's like, well, what did he mean? And I said, well, I said, you know, what fire insurance is, and he's like, duh. I said, it's the just in case, <laughs> just in case I need. Oh, that, I, I I have to give somebody else credit for that. That, that is not my saying. I, that that is a very common saying here in the south ah yeah that's why that's why i wasn't familiar with it because i'm not from your part of the wasn't born in your part of the well, country well i mean this is as close as you can get to being born in heaven <laughs> <laughs> well there you go there you go oh man when when you said when you said Baptists are kind of like the Hezbollah of Christians, I thought you were going to say that that they that they found rules and regulations to to in, in, to tell people that that aren't actually in the in the Bible. They're like, well, that's not actually in the Bible, but we all got together and decided. Right. I, I love the one about the wine. You know, the Baptists. You you can't drink Methodist too, and. That's a sin. I'm like, where does it say that? In the Bible, where in the Bible does it say, thou shalt not consume alcohol ever or you'll go to hell? Well, well. It, well, I think, it's, I think it's funny. I have breakfast with a friend of mine who's a Baptist preacher several days a week. We're very good friends. And um, he talks about the grape juice, you know. And I'm like, yeah, because that's what Jesus drank, some grape juice. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, I know, I know. I think it's so funny, you know, like, and, I, and I've asked people, so I, didn't Jesus drink wine? Oh, yeah, but that that was just basically grape juice. No, it wasn't. No, it was. <laughs> <laughs> it, was it was probably the strongest wine that there ever was, probably 11, 12 percent alcohol or something, you know? Oh, yeah. Well, if, if you read any of the any of the old Greek uh, literature or text, they're always talking about mm -hmm. mixing the wine. And, uh -huh. and, yep. they, and they had these very, right. They had these very formal silver bowls and stuff that they would mix the wine before the meal. And you're like, "What are you talking about? Where did you mix the wine?" Because it was so strong that if you just gave it to mm -hmm. people straight, they would get they would get drunk instantly. And so they had to, yeah. they had to mix it. They had to dilute it. And oh, dude, wasn't it? Uh, didn't Odysseus give unmixed wine to the Cyclops? And that's what made him drunk. And it, <laughs> that sounds right. Yeah. So, but the, and so if these, these, and I'm not trying to go off on a tangent, but Hey, this is my show. I can say whatever I want. Uh, these, <laughs> these, uh, you know, whether it's Methodist or Baptist or whatever, and they're like, ah, derp, derp, you know, alcohol is, is, is sin and it's evil. And you say, all right, there's this little thing in the Bible called the, the new Testament. You might've heard of it, right? You're like, okay, yeah, we heard of it. Say, all right, and there's this guy named Jesus Christ, and he, you know, you're like, you heard him. And you're like, yeah, I heard him. Okay, okay. What was his first miracle? And that's when the, that's he, the, turned, he turned water into grape juice. Yeah, it turned water into Welch's grape juice. No. 
And, and it wasn't like that was his 73rd miracle or whatever, or, you know, his 207th miracle. It was the first one. So what you're telling me is that you, Baptist Church Commission, you Methodist Church whatever, you know, commissioners, that you actually have decided you're smarter than Jesus Christ. Congratulations to you. Oh, we're not saying that at all. Okay. Well, where did that come from? From from when did when did you guys all go into a room and say, "Okay, up to this point in time, wine was okay." But when we all leave this room, we're going to go tell all those people that it's not. Well, you know the uh I think it's Latin, in vino and vito mm-hmm. in, in in wine in wine there's truth. Yep, in vino veritas. I I think that's why they don't want to, people drinking is because they don't want to speak the truth. They're afraid of the truth. They're afraid of what will come out. Well, again, I, I was raised as, as a Southern Baptist, and um, the gossip by the men and women was rampant. But they, mm. you know, but they wouldn't. They would never approach anybody to say anything to them about these suspected mis misdoings they would just talk about them behind their back and i think if everybody got all liquored up they just have it out and they're like oh yeah and by the way your dog shitting on my lawn oh i said the s word <laughs> Boop. okay we'll go back but <laughs> and you know it's it's funny because people say oh well it says in this chapter be ye not a drunkard like all right rock on so every person who consumes wine is a drunkard, you know, um, I, I don't, I don't get that. And they're like, and, and, and beware of strong drink. Yeah, I get that part. Beware of strong drink. And it also says, yeah. you know, and it also says in, in Ecclesiastes book three or chapter three, there is a time for every purpose under heaven, right? So, and oh, indulging in anything. I mean, but we talk, you said, I bring up gluttony, and then they shut up and walk away. <laughs> well, that's the thing. It's, that's the thing. Like, uh, they they want to lecture me about this or that, and they, they're they obviously gluttonous. I mean, you go to a Baptist church, and you're like, watch everybody wall in, wall out. Not every person, of course. Not every Baptist, but like, you know, obesity in, 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 in Southern Baptist Church is a real problem. And, uh, but they don't want to talk about that. They don't, it, it's, there's a saying, don't hate me because I sin differently from you. Mm-hmm. Because he, he without sin cast the first stone. And, uh, but that's what they like to do. They like to point to others. I think that they somehow make them think that that's them being next to God. Uh, in some way, but it uh, it is it's blasphemous. You, you're not supposed to judge people. You're not supposed to gossip. You know, you're not supposed to do those things. It, it's actually it's better for you to do it out loud. It's it's actually better. Right. I mean, it, all throughout the book of Proverbs, and this is why I love I love sharing these things because Solomon's like, hey man, Solomon is the one who came up with spare the rod, spoil the child, a- and he said that not in not one, but numerous times. Uh, and also, you know, teach a wise man, and, and he will be wiser still. And it's all throughout Proverbs, it talks about how we're, it's not just a suggestion, we're actually commanded to make corrections. And then he also it, it, uh, admonishes, he's like, look, a wise man will take these corrections, accept them, and become better. So if, yeah. if, if your goal is, well, we're not going to say that, bless her heart, because, you know, that'll make her feel bad. So what we'll do is we'll just go, we'll go talk about them behind their back, because that makes it better. Well, well, you remember, you know, in the 1990s, um, back in the day, if you even mentioned taking a gun for self-defense into a church, oh, it, the, the wheels would come off of the thing. It was, I mean, the people would just, it, like old women would start fainting. You know, oh, how could you into the house of God? I'm like, free will. Like, 
that that is the greatest thing about being alive and the worst thing that, about being alive because everybody gets it. Mm-hmm. And uh, criminals have free will. They don't, you know, I mean, we, we have seen even before the 1990s, but we've seen since all the violence. And now every church has got a couple of dudes with carry permits. It's got a quote unquote security team, which is mm-hmm. better than nothing, but maybe not. Yeah. Um, but just, just how, just how, churchgoers had to literally be be shot at before it, they would do any kind of logical change into their safety procedures oh yeah i mean it, it's yeah it's it's a shame that people like literally had to die before people said oh well okay yeah i guess all that's right. all right you know and I remember, I remember growing up in in uh, in the late seventies, early eighties, going to church in Detroit, and I knew the kids in my class whose you know dads were cops, Detroit cops, and and, mm-hmm. and the one kid, he's like you know when you when you're like in fifth and sixth grade, you know, and and you know that you know, the dad is a cop, and he's like, does he carry his gun? And he's like, oh yeah, and of course this kid is like totally busting on his dad because oh yeah, because when he gets dressed in his suit, he wears it on his ankle. <laughs> you know? so, so, so you know, I remember being like twelve or thirteen or whatever, seeing that kid's dad and their family coming into church, and I was like, oh, he's got a gun on his ankle because you. Know, you know, because Jimmy told me he does. <laughs> right, yeah, right. But that was okay because they actually because they were certified. You know, they were they were they were pope. It was a popo, and you know they could be right. they could be forgiven for that as long as none of the old ladies saw it. Yeah, right. Yeah, as long as nobody saw it, it was it was okay. It was okay. Yep. Um. So I. I got a question for you. Has anybody or have people been coming to your classes like the fight or fighting pistol or whatever? And have they told you I'm here because I am part of a church security team and I need training? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Good. I mean, frequently, frequently. And some of them don't offer it up, but the, the subject comes up and then somebody will go, yeah, yeah, me too. Or, oh yeah, me too. Uh, but I would, I would, I would say there's one or more of those people in almost every class. Even if they're not on the, the church, legitimate church security team, mm-hmm. they are churchgoers. They are churchgoers that carry, and and that's why they're there. That's fantastic. And like you said, you know, 20 years ago, that probably wouldn't it wouldn't have been a thing. I know it wouldn't have been a thing. And, and if somebody would have showed up for class 20 years ago with that in mind, they never would have admitted it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They, you can't say that out loud. If somebody finds yep. out, then you're like, oh, you're you're that crazy paranoid guy who thinks he needs to have a gun. <laughs> in in uh, in '98, I had a student that got into a hundred percent justified self defense shooting, and literally was excommunicated from his church. Like the congregation literally formally turned their back on him. Like in unison, like a planned, a planned thing. They all turned their back on him, and so you have a guy that's going through some some PTSD, and the place he would go for some type of comfort is just turned their back on him. I thought that guy was going to kill himself. Seriously, that's horrible, and that is one of yep. the reasons that. Well, I, I'm sure I sent you the the Faith and the Patriot book. Um, Mm-hmm. The reason I wrote that so many years ago was because I was fed up to my gills with these spineless sycophant Christians. You know, the, these yep. these spineless, you know. Well, there, there's there's and there's there's two attacks. There's a double edged sword. On one hand, you have Hollywood and the media and essentially the Democrat Party portraying Christians as either weak, spineless, or as hypocrites, right? Right. They all, all Christians are all hypocrites. I mean, watch any television show or any movie. If there's a Christian in the show, they're either a hypocrite or 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 they're a, a doofus. They're they're portrayed as 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 a bumbling moron. Yeah, and, Ned Flanders kind of. Yeah, the Ned Flanders kind of thing. Uh, and then we have Christians 
that just don't want to stand up and, and and take note and be bold and strong and courageous and say, no, no, I'm not just going to roll over. There's this, this false premise that's being put out in our populist churches that in order to be a Christian, you must be weak and subservient. You, you basically, you just need to be a biatch, and 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 I'm trying to keep this totally PG, um, and roll uh, over. I just want to I, I just want to point out that you're the one having to watch your mouth. Yeah, I I well I I did it the one time. I said dog poop. I did. I did. I'm just I'm, I'm over here very calm and collected, watching my mouth, Polishing. and you are. Uh, you're you're potty mouth. You you you're over there polishing your halo and <laughs> got a can of brasso out polishing your halo. Yeah. That's, that's cool. Yeah. But uh, you know th- this whole idea, this whole nonsense that if you well people's like, "Well, how can you call yourself a Christian and still carry a gun?" Because you know, it says thou shalt not kill. Is that what the original Hebrew text said? No. Well, right. what did it say? I, I, it, <laughs> there's nothing. There's nothing in the Bible that would tell you that you can't defend yourself. Your your life is a gift from God. Su- it, 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 suicide is sinful. I think that I don't think that's disputed. So let, letting yourself be killed is akin to suicide, which is. Sinful. And a mortal sin, yeah. So, yeah, what do you do? Yeah, well, the you know, the original text in Hebrew, the translation from Hebrew says, thou shalt not commit murder. And then, yep. you know, we English people just decided to dumb it down, you know. We did Ten Commandments for Dummies, and we're like, thou shalt not kill. That means nothing, no mice or mosquitoes or anything. No, that's right. not what it says. It's not what it says at all. Jed, just because you dumbed it down doesn't make it reality. So, yep. You know, our 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 purpose is is to is to encourage, to give encouragement. Those people who who deep down they believe like, okay, I I understand this, but at the same time, I'm inundated by these people who are trying to convince me that I can't stand up, that I can't be bold, I cannot be fearless, because if I am, well, I'm hurting people's feelings and yada, yada. No, it's time to stand up. It's time to be bold. You know, I was talking to, I can't remember who it was, but it was within the last two weeks, and I was talking about the the great lie of the Crusades that has been perpetrated. Mm-hmm. We, we are, we're, the media is... And I don't know whether the Muslims started it or whether the socialists started it or whatever, but this this lie that Crusaders were these evil invaders that oh, left right. Europe oh, to right. go invade the Holy Land and try and the poor peaceful Muslims they're just sitting around baking pita bread, and here come all yeah. these mean evil Christians. And yeah, there, there was it was retribution for hundreds of years of Muslim violence. Yeah, it was an Easter. It was an Easter Sunday slaughter of of Christian pilgrims, and finally the Pope's like, "We got to put a stop to this. We're, we got to put a stop to this." Of course, we're not we're not supposed to know that those people were taken. Those who weren't murdered were enslaved, because if we know anything about the Muslim country, culture, they're big on slaves. Uh, ask, right. ask Thomas Jefferson; he knew. I mean, we had to fight a war in freaking in the Mediterranean against the Barbary pirates because they were they were capturing our ships and enslaving the people on the boats. They uh, they made us make the Marine Corps. Yeah, yeah. And Jefferson's like, hey man, send these dudes. You know, <laughs> Presley O'Bannon and so forth. I mean, I just, I actually read a really good book. It was, it was basically, it was called Thomas Jefferson and, and the Barbary Pirates, and it went through that whole history. Uh, but yeah, the, the big lie that we've been told about the Crusaders and the Crusades, how it was Christians trying to persecute and force, and that's the other lie that, well, the Christian crusaders, they were trying to force these poor, peaceful Muslims to do what they wanted them to do and, and to convert and da 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 da. There's one religion uh, 
or cult, whatever you want to call it, on planet Earth, that if you don't convert, you get your head cut off. And it's not Christianity. You can fill in the blank however you want. Uh, but, yeah, this the big lie that, you know, your crusaders were these barbarous, mean, evil guys. And, yep. and, now, and then you transfer that over to this big lie that if you carry a gun for self-defense or if you would get purposely between evil and the innocent to defend the innocent, then you are a sinner. And you, you can't be a Christian and also fight against evil. Well, the good news is, I think for the most part, people, because they've had to, they've been forced to with the violence being here at home, I think they've had to kind of admit, eh, maybe those guns aren't so bad. Yeah, maybe maybe that maybe that Jaeger guy's not so crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm sure of that. <laughs> well, what, what I haven't brought up yet... And the the secret for the audience who who doesn't know the the deep history of James Yaker is that that you got yourself ordained so that you could marry one of your friends. First off, I've married my wife twenty twenty five years ago, and I haven't married anybody else. Oh, you mean performance <laughs> service? Yes. Yeah, I don't have a harem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I. Uh, I got myself ordained and uh, and performed a marriage. That's correct. Now, did you just do the one, and that was it? Was it was a one and done? Yeah, uh, a bunch of people have asked me to do theirs, and I say no. And they said, "Well, you did that other one," and so I reply, "Okay, if you get married at the Kennedy Compound, I'll do your marriage." <laughs> Well, they do have a backup, and it's Buell Collins. <laughs> Buell is the well, backup. Goes, goes from bad to worse. <laughs> and and you, when uh, you know he he performed the ceremony at Sonny Pazikas's wedding, and he actually had performed two other ceremonies prior to that. And the way he he put it was. Yeah, and I also married, I married such and such, and I married my sister. And I said, <laughs> I said, you probably should phrase it a different way. I said, you mean you right. performed the ceremony for you? Yeah. He's like, no. He's like, no. <laughs> He's like, no, man. <laughs> you don't know me. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know me. Oh, man. <laughs> So there, you, there you go. You, so you're leaving, you're leaving the church and to your your buddy that you have that you have breakfast with your, your ministry. You have the, the real, with. the real, the real preacher man. Yeah. So uh, when I was there, I met uh, the uh, secretary of the navy under Bush, and I was standing around with a bunch of seals and you know like real, real top tier guys, and. Uh, yeah, I knew most of them. Uh, our friend Jack Carr was one of them, you know. And um, and the, uh, the the Secretary of the Navy said to the to everybody, hey, uh, Billy says it's one of us that's doing this thing. And so the SEALs pointed at me. And he goes, you're a Padre? So now every time I see that guy, he calls me Padre. <laughs> padre! <laughs> so so we, go do, we go do the... Uh, the wedding, we get up there, and the microphone doesn't work. And we're out on the grassy area where they were used to land the helicopters for JFK to get off to go into his house. We're on that piece of dirt. And um, the microphone doesn't work. And Billy looked at me. He said, can you do this? I'm like, yeah, you know, because I can get loud, right? And so I'm, do I'm doing the thing without any kind of mic. And uh, the SEALs. And the Secretary of the Navy, and there's some other guys there. They're in the back, the back, very back row. They're like, you know, making gestures and pointing and laughing and stuff. And we get done. And these guys, these tip of the spear guys that have done a lot of dangerous stuff, walk up to me and go, Man, you got some balls on you. <laughs> 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 and it was just then, it was just at that moment that I realized the gravity of the situation. <laughs> uh, 
has has anybody <laughs> referred to you as as Reverend Jim yet? No, I never got that. Oh, you know who Reverend Jim was, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Taxi. Jim Ignatowski. <laughs> 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 oh, Christopher Lloyd, the man of many faces. Oh man! Yeah. What's funny is, like, you tell a kid today, like, you get a even a millennial or like like Jared, and you show him Taxi, and they're like, okay, whatever. And you say, you see that guy there? That that's Doc Brown. And they're like, what? Yeah. No, most, most of them would be like, who's Doc Brown? Yeah, yeah. You're like, you say Back to the Future, and go, what's Back to the Future? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Reverend Jim, Reverend Jim. Oh man. Well, I'm trying to make sure my my kids are grown. I did a good job with them, so I'm trying to make sure the grandkids are being properly educated. So, the last time we were together, we watched the, the Quest for the Holy Grail, and they laughed appropriately at the appropriate times. And now they walk <laughs> around. You know, they, they fall down. One the other one yells. Yeah, it's been a fresh wound, you know, and so I'm trying to make sure that they have, you know, they watch the Three Stooges and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So I'm trying to make sure I'm doing my part. That's excellent. That's excellent. There's nothing worse than, than, than dropping a line from a movie in front of a class and everyone just blank stares you. Yeah. Here's the thing. I, I, I am happy, used to be, as you know, if, um, you, everybody would laugh. But now, if I get 33% to laugh, I, that's a win uh, because <laughs> because I'm I'm still a fan of pop culture, so I'll have some pop culture references. Mm. The younger people laugh at the older people just look around like, "What the hell was that?" Now <laughs> I'll say something about you know the little rascals or three stooges, and the old guys laugh, and the kids know what I'm talking about. And, you know, <laughs> so, so I yeah. just take thirty three percent as a win. Yeah, it's tough being being a platform instructor today. Because you, I mean, you got to throw yeah. in, you got to throw in Three Stooges references, and you also got to throw in Fifty Cent and DMX references too. Yeah, you know? oh, that's old stuff. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's not even current anymore. That's not even current. Oh man. Well, I mean, the thing is, if you remember uh, when we were younger, up until the nineties, up until the internet. We had shared experiences. Like yeah. when you were a little kid, you got on the you got on the school bus the night before. Everybody either watched Little House on the Prairie or Dukes of Hazard, whatever. Right. But everybody watched one of those two shows, and so you you would talk to your class. Your bus would talk about it, things like that. Now I go to Walmart and I see season eight of some show I've never heard of. Oh yeah. It, it, and, and so uh, I'm just like, yeah, that's one of the problems, or that was one of the strengths of our society, was that shared experience. Like, no matter who you were, you watched All in the Family. Right. Like, you saw you saw Bugs Bunny, period. Mm. Like, people our age, every one of every, without a doubt, every single one of them saw Bugs Bunny. But kids today... They don't have that same shared experience. I remember if you really wanted to be a cool kid on Monday morning in junior high, you needed mm -hmm. to know what happened on Saturday Night Live. Oh, yeah. Oh, and gosh. That was way past. Oh, yeah. I had strict parents, and that was way past my bedtime. There was My parents were like, yeah, stay up until midnight and watch Saturday Night Live so you could be cool on Monday morning. No. So you you remember black and white portable televisions? Oh yeah. I mean, w when we grew up, you had a regular TV. No, wait, ninety pounds. Yeah, you had a regular TV, <laughs> and then your mom and dad might have had this black and white set that you could actually pick up and move because the main TV was furniture. That thing wasn't moving. Yeah. And so, yep. in order to to try and maintain status in in the the cool guy realm, I would take. The black and white TV. And maybe I'm confessing a sin here. Confessing a sin. Uh, and go. I had a walk-in closet. I, I was very fortunate when I was in Detroit. We had a big house, and there was a walk-in closet. So I knew that if I just turned it on in my room, that my parents would hear 
me laughing, you know, <laughs> why, why is he laughing? It's midnight. Why are you laughing? So I would go into and, and I would turn the volume up just enough that I could hear it so that I could talk about what Jim Belushi did as the samurai tailor or the samurai delicatessen or yeah, <laughs> on, cause man, if eighth grade was, was terrible if you didn't know yeah. what happened on Saturday Night Live the previous weekend. Well, well, here's my problem. My brother wanted to watch local wrestling. So I only got Saturday Night Live every other Saturday. And it's funny because he watched Saturday Night Live and he laughed. And I hated the wrestling. Hated it. And uh, I would say to him, why don't we just watch this? Because we both enjoy this. He goes, yeah, but I won't watch wrestling. I think he did it just because he was my younger brother and that's something he could do. <laughs> he could he could have that little tiny bit of control. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, we went all over the map today, but that's okay. That's okay. So the the lesson for today is don't be a fire insurance Christian and don't don't be afraid to stand up and hold your chest out and say uh no, this is the truth. And if you don't like the truth, well, I'm just going to kick the dust off my feet and I'm going to move on down the road and then you can do whatever you want to do. So our, our job is to deliver the, the message. Our job is to stand between evil and the innocent. And that is what the Legion of Michael is all about. And uh, Absolutely. Reverend Jim, the Padre. <laughs> The the pot. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna. <laughs> don't do it. Whatever you're about to say, don't do it. I was gonna say Hackathorn or <laughs> or, or Farnham, <laughs> and I, I'm actually kind of surprised that neither one of those guys, especially Hack, hasn't started because I know they both because they're they're they are the 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 uh, Buddhas that they both refer to you as Jim. But nobody else does because you're not freaking John Farnham and you're not Ken Hackathorn. <laughs> well, I pick up, I pick up John uh, on Friday for a class this weekend, so uh-huh. I'll see him soon enough. Very good, very good. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was my good friend James Yeager, and uh, your mission is to go forth, be bold. Don't worry about what the cowards say. Worry about being strong. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit the closer and. That's it. Talk to you again soon.